At Target, you can find the things you need that also align with your sustainable goals and help you care for the planet. Target makes it easy to shop with the future in mind. With brands like Everspring, made with natural ingredients and recycled packaging, Target Clean Beauty products, formulated without chemicals and other harmful ingredients, and initiatives like Target Zero that offer zero-waste beauty solutions. All of these products are available at everyday low prices, meaning you never have to compromise what's important to you when you shop. Sustainable college essentials, from recycled packaging and zero-waste beauty, available at Target. Visit Target.com or head to your local Target store. Progressive Snapshot can save you money based on how you drive and how much you drive. So the safer you drive, the more money you could save. Now, if you didn't hear that because you were yelling at another car while driving, let me say it again. You need to calm down. Yelling is just making everyone as stressed out as you are and letting them all know that you definitely aren't trying to save with Progressive Snapshot. <clears throat> and if you did hear it the first time because you weren't yelling at another car, nice work. You'd love Snapshot from Progressive because it rewards safe drivers. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in California and North Carolina or from all agents. Stand by. The vacuum tubes are warming up. This is a special live broadcast. Right here on Georgia Radio. 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 Well, a great good evening to all of you. Once again, you have stumbled upon the Georgia Folk and Farm Life Radio Show with me, Wade Peoples, and Matt Jolly of Georgia Radio, and sponsored by Meek Brothers Calcum. And tonight we have uh, we finished up our series on photographers and then uh, decided we would uh, put the spotlight on a few Georgia Folk and Farm Life Facebook group members. And premier among those were... Ruth Brown Jenkins and her husband, Mr. Al Jenkins, lost Mr. Al a couple of weeks ago. And some of you may think that's not a good time to bring Miss Ruth on, but Miss Ruth's doing well and she's upbeat and she loves me and I love her and I love Mr. Al. And I just like to share some of Miss, I want to share Miss Ruth with y'all. And so she was good enough to come on as our guest tonight. And it's going to be a, it'll be an upbeat, fun show. And, uh, because Miss Ruth's full of life and life abundant. And, uh, she wants to share that with you too. So welcome, Miss Ruth. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Had a good and visit with you tonight, Sunday afternoon. Yes, I enjoyed it immensely. And Susan being here with us and all, we just had a really good time. It was. It was a good afternoon. and We had a good time. Susan actually had brought you flowers and dinner. Now, when when you have a friend yes, that will drive and they feel beautiful. 40 they miles to bring you. When so you have a friend that will drive 40 miles to bring you flowers and a good homemade meal, that's pretty good. Uh, believe it or not, I have had that before because when I was able, I was that friend to these people. Well, it's good that, that and, uh, to be a friend and then, and have friends like that. It really is. Yes, it is. Well, tonight, Wade wanted to tell you about me getting my first driver's license. And you got to bear in mind, in 1953, we lived in a whole different world than we live in today. Right. And if you grew up in a small town and you were a girl and your folks were just... You know, they just ate by and got by on a living. There was no jobs for you. You certainly weren't going to have the money to go to college. And if you found somebody fool enough to marry you that could support you, you got married. <laughs> well, I did. And I didn't even know I married a rich boy. That's how stupid I was. <laughs> but anyway, he had a nice, pretty new car, and I had never done anything but ride a bicycle. I've never, I've never steered anything. How old were you? And 13. I turned 14 in <laughs> September after I married in June. And it, it was a rude awakening. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know what the foreign people did, but they got ready to come to town on a Saturday. Well, honey, they didn't all of them come to town and go to the show on a Saturday. I learned that real fast. But he, I wanted to drive his new car. Well, he had an old ragged, on the surplus Jeep, and it five and you know full shift in the five years and all this stuff, and we had a thirty acre pasture. And he said, "You take this Jeep out there and you drive it until you can do it without grinding gears, and you can drive my car." Honey, I must have drove a hundred miles in that thirty acre pasture that day, but I got to where I could do it. And yes, I drove his car. I'm thirteen years old. I wanted to go to Pembroke and visit my mom, and I lived at Neville's. I got in my car, and I went. Well, when they found out I was a good driver, 
they showed me how to drive the big truck. And I was just there when you could always go haul a load of corn or go pick up a load of fertilizer or get a hog to the market or whatever. <laughs> and I'm 14 years old. <laughs> okay, I did this only until I was 15 years old. And when I was 15, I was pregnant with my first child. Well, our sheriff was a very laid back guy. I mean, he was, <laughs> Andy Griffin was a, was hyper compared to him. And he'd see me at the hog market every week bringing hogs or picking up some we'd bought. And he told me, he said, I'm going to tell you what you do. I want you to come by my office. Next Wednesday when the state patrol was there and I want to get you some driver's license because we don't want to have that baby that's to be paid for by the Bullock County Jail System for you being locked up for driving with no license. So I did. I went up there and, you know, I'm so smart I know everything. I drove a big truck pulling 44-foot trailer full of shell corn. And I took up <laughs> one whole side of the courthouse where you could park on it then. It felt the street side. You couldn't park on 301, but the other three sides, you couldn't. It just held that big truck. Little old state patrol wasn't much smarter than I was and much, much, much older. And I went there and I said, well, okay, Sodder, you told me to come by and get me some driver's license. He said, well, here you got to drive. You've got to fill this test out. And I said, I don't test real good. You just ask me the questions, I'll answer them. So he did. And the state patrol said, well, now we've got to go for a driver's test. Started, went over to that window and looked, and he said, come here a minute. Well, the guy followed him. He said she drove that truck with that trailer load of corn on that part out there. Do you suppose she can drive? Well, the state patrol didn't know what to say. Started said, and here I am seven months pregnant. And he said, just give her a license. And just as soon as she can drive it, well, she wasn't supposed to drive anything up here. I said, then how was I supposed to get here? I'm too pregnant to walk. <laughs> Needless to say, and I didn't have enough money to pay for them. It wasn't but $1.75. And I didn't have that money to pay for them, so the sheriff had to loan me money to finish paying for them. And I have never, I've never had a license check. I've never had a point on my license. Was that the first and only one you ever got? Did you go back and get a new one when it went out? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I one year when I lived in Virginia, I thought my license was going to expire in Georgia, and you don't want to try to get a license in Virginia. Trust me. And so we drove all night to get home, where I could go to get my driver's license Saturday morning, and got there and I had another whole year on. Them. Lord have mercy. So That's funny. Just say we drove all night. Saturday night, get back home Sunday where we could uh, go to work Monday. That's a, Miss Ruth, I love that story. Well, but well, you, were, you were 15 years old. You were married, 15, pregnant, and you drove a tractor trailer. I married at 13. Court. Right. I married at 13. And by the time I was 19, I had three children. My children were always well-dressed. They were clean. They were well-fed. And you could take them and go anywhere in the world with them. And one of them sat on my hip, and the other one stood behind me with his arm around my neck, singing the music and patting my shoulder for just to the music. <laughs> I just pictured that. Lord, and you and were just a child yourself, really, when you, when you had I was, children. but I, honey, I'd get out and play toad frog houses with my children. We built roads, and drove trucks and uh, I didn't have enough sense to know that any say any danger and I never had one to get hurt in an accident uh, and my children had about they, my oldest son said if any child ever had a perfect childhood it was him they didn't have Tonka toys but they had real tractors and real trucks and trailers my eight-year-old got in a big truck and drove it to Neville's to buy him a Coca-Cola. <laughs> and I like to have a heart attack. I mean, here is this young man, eight years old, driving a eight semi. Years eight years old. That's I had a, in 1965, I had a brand-new white Oldsmobile, top of the line. Well, you remember them had them old long doors? All right. That's and right. the kids, they come in, and the, and the children was going to wash the car where one of them would get to back it up out there to the 
uh, place to wash it, nothing to get to pull it back under the shelter. Lanny was supposed to be backing it up, and Leah went to aggravate him and told him, he said, I'm going to take it away from you. Well, he meant to hit the brake, but he hit the gas, and that door was open where he could look out and see. He knocked the whole door off of that car. He got out and looked. He said, help me put it back on, and Mama opened it and fall off, and she'll think she did it. That's hilarious. I had to drive that car for a week before we could go get the door put back on. Now, that was fun. Well, you uh, you were – now, you know, uh, you were married, and you lost your first husband. That, that, and then then you uh, – we just – we go back to that. But then you were married to Mr. Al. And I didn't uh, – tell us, you, you y'all lived in class. Mr. Al was time. my third husband. Mr. Third Al husband. was my third husband and my fifth husband. And third and fifth, yeah. <laughs> There's, there's I do repeat business. <laughs> <laughs> Mama said I didn't know what I had enough. I had to go back for some more. But Mr. Mr. Al been married to you and Mr. Al ran away from home. He did. He left and stayed gone for 20 years and came back. He just left one day and came back one day. And he had a cigar box full of old money that his granddaddy had from his little country store. And when he come back, I I went there and I said, I got something here of yours I kept for you. And there was his money. And he said, That's You it. kept that all this time? I said, Well, you might have come back. And I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and then y'all were together how many years until he passed? Well, we got reacquainted in 2009 in the spring. And when I, I went to his sister's visitation, and he's standing at the head of the casket, greeting the people in the crowd. And the last time I saw him, he looked like the Marlboro man. Well, when I saw him this time, he looked like Fat Albert. <laughs> but he was greeting them old ladies that he knew as a young man and thanking them for coming and patting them on the back and all this stuff. Well, he didn't recognize me, but I did him. He was the only big man there crying. So I got in line. And I waited my turn behind him, but asking, oh, who you are? I can't think of your name. And patting him on the back and hugging him for coming and, and crying a little bit with him and all this stuff. I waited my turn. Well, all he did was hug me and thank me for coming. Well, I wasn't going to settle for that. I got him by both hands and back up where I could look over the top of my glasses like I meant what I was saying. And I said, you don't recognize me, do you? He said, well, should I? I said, well, we were married for a year one time. <laughs> that man really went to his knees, and when he come up, he come up with his arms under my armpit, and he got me on that belly, and he rocked me till I liked to be seasick before he let me down. And, yes, we made a spectacle of ourselves right there in the funeral home. My brother said, if you go to a funeral home to a visitation and you pick up the man and you find out your ex husband, you might be a redneck. <laughs> well, I raised my hand and I said, I are a redneck. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So that's how we got reacquainted after all those years. Lord, how mercy. That's funny. And I, I, Mr. Al, <laughs> listen, I love Mr. Al. He was, you know, on the, I, several years ago when we, when uh, Randy Olive had Wally World Store in Swainsboro and I ran it for him, that was Mr. Al's, what is, set, what birthday was that? How was he that year? Today I had that picture of us up there going through the store. Miss Asbury was talking about how good that right. uh, Miss Elbert Cake was. Well, how, what year, what hell was he that year? 70? I'm 83, and he's 79 now. That must okay, have been about his 75th birthday. It was his 75th birthday. birthday. It was his 75th yeah, birthday. Yeah. And you asked him what he and wanted to do for his birthday. And I had this lady to bake him this cake. Right. Yeah. You asked him what he wanted to do for his birthday. You asked him what he wanted to do for his birthday. He wanted to go to the store. That's right. Do you ask him what he wanted to do for his birthday? Oh, we... You asked him what he wanted to do for his birthday, and he said he wanted that red velvet cake and to go spend his birthday with me, and y'all did, and that was he a did, wonderful he time. Did. And we picked great. that cake up and stopped and registered Georgia and bought some paper plates and some uh, utensils. And I think, oh, yeah, we bought a cheap set of knives, $5 set of knives, where we'd have something to cook it with. That was a and good And we pretty close eating that cake. It was good. That was uh, Josh Walbart was there, and he and Westbury different, and we all we shared, and uh, yeah, that well, was a great. Well, they were That's right. 
And I was just honored that Mr. Al wanted to spend his 75th birthday with me. I thought it was his 75th. I just want to make sure. And I said that. remember, I bought that little air conditioner from you, that's and that's right. been that's the right. best purchase I've ever made. I remember that um, well. After he got sick, he was sleep in that room because he couldn't hear me get up rambling all at night because they ain't no telling where me and that chair is going to be and what I'm going to run into and how I'm going to get stuck. But I, got, I do like I did drive that big truck. I find a way out of there. That's right. So Ms. he Bruce. goes out there and turns that air conditioner on where he couldn't hear me. All right, we got to take a break. It's the time for we got to take our our co- beloved commercial break for Meeks Brothers Cattle Company. We'll Hi, right. this okay. is Wade Peebles from Georgia Folk and Farm Life Radio. I'm here to tell you about Meeks Brothers Cattle Company, and you don't have to worry about supply chain issues or where your beef comes from. Do what I do and call Meeks Brothers Cattle Company today. You can get a whole half, a quarter, any amount of beef you want. Good quality beef, vacuum packed, lasts up to three years in your freezer. It's grass fed, grain finished, made to order. Visit Meeks Brothers Cattle Company on Facebook today and tell them Brother Wade sent you. And that's Meeks Brothers Cattle Company. Thank you. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive save over $700 on average, and those savings add up. Imagine what you could buy in the future. So I used the savings from switching to Progressive 30 years ago to buy tickets to the championship game. You know, between those two teams that didn't exist 30 years ago? Yeah, I'm a big Alaska Palm Trees fan. Which is a team now, in the future? So switch to Progressive and save big because those savings can add up in the future. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customer surveyed who saved with Progressive in 2020. Potential savings will vary. Well, welcome back, everybody. We're in our mid-show break here on the Georgia Folk and Farm Life Radio Show. And we just gave you a message about the Meat Brothers Cattle Company, our sponsor. Glad to really be a, a appreciative of what they do for us and we're back with uh matt here with matt on georgia radio and uh last half of the show tonight and we have miss ruth brown jenkins tonight a, a lovely friend of mine a great group member of georgia folk and farm life and just a sweetheart and a true southern lady hey miss ruth Wade, you don't really know me. I don't know who you're describing. <laughs> <laughs> when I said true well, something, lady, what was the lady part? Or the t- <laughs> well, I'm female. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, well, you, I, you, ever, have, you have turned some ladies' faces red a few times over the years and enjoyed doing it, haven't you? Oh, I, oh I'm sure. I'm sure. And... My mama turned my behind red over the years, too, for that mouth of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't do any good. She tried, to. But I joined the church when I was 10 years old. Well, I didn't learn to swim until I was 40. And I was terrified of water getting in my face. I mean, I, I just knew I was drowning. And our old preacher looked kind of like the buzzard on that cartoon that used to be on he was tall and had that crook in his neck and he uh i was so bad to kick the seats in front of me till he put a stool up there side of me where i could sit by him and i thought it's because he loved me i didn't know it was keep me quiet where the rest of the people here i didn't have a song to slam back into and couldn't kick those put seats in front of me and i just knew i was special i didn't know i was just mean as heck you are special, <laughs> and you are mean as heck. Yeah, we love you for it. Listen, Miss Ruth, you said you were going. You were going to talk but about rolling gonna, stores tonight. Can you hear me? Can you? Uh, I want to finish this story there. Oh, yeah, he went finish the story, but he wasn't baptized. He you went to baptize me. Oh, he went to baptize. You got you. And when he went to duck me, it scared me, and he went down with me. I baptized the preacher. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> At least you didn't drown the preacher. Yeah. No, he was tall. You couldn't. I had to help him under a while. <laughs> she just got him good and wet. Huh? But yeah, uh, when we were back in when I was a child, we lived in the country, and very few people in the country had transportation. And if they had it, they couldn't afford to buy the gas, and it was rushing, so you wouldn't have it anyway. And so the lanes and. Pembroke had a grocery store and he bought an old bluebird bus and had it painted a dark navy blue and had Lane's rolling store put on it. And his 15-year-old nephew would come every 
Thursday and Friday. One thir- Thursday he worked one area, and then Friday he worked another. And they would let you barter because nobody had any money. And you could trade sweet potatoes, live chickens, lard, milk, butter, whatever. Whatever you had more of than you could need, that you needed, and you could get merchandise in exchange for it. Well, the only thing Mama ever bought was flour and lard occasionally. Most of the time we had our own. And, you know, tea and coffee. And most of that was Louisiana because it was so strong you didn't have to use much. And besides, they had coupons that come with it you could get stuff with. And the other thing that they had was canned milk. Well, we had a cow, but you see, she didn't, she wasn't given a lot of milk and you had no way to keep it refrigerated unless you had a well. You could put it in the bucket, let it down the well, and it would stay a day or so. So my, we, got, we got Borden's milk, which nobody has heard much about in this world today, but it had a big old silver cow on the front of it. And you could get, it had coupons. And Mama got me a gold pigment ring when I was 10 years old, and it took me about three days to lose it. Wow. It took her about four weeks to get through whipping me for losing my <laughs> ring. <laughs> but... Oh, uh, was that LC the silver cow? Was that LC the cow on board? That was on board and milk, wasn't it? LC. Yes, and and she had babies, and oh, uh, the oldest girl was Beulah, and the boy was Beauregard, and her husband wow. was Elmer, and that's Elmer. where Elmer Glue got that name for oh, all that part. I, I like that. That's a good story. And I didn't then, know that. Didn't realize that. And then she had a uh, twin. And they named them Laura Bella and Laura Bella or something to that, that effect. But they would have pictures. Uh, they would, you know, part of their advertising would have a cow head coming out of milk can. And right. her with flowers all around her neck. And honey, they bought a cow and calves and traveled all over the United States. And people would pay to come see Elk City Cow. I mean, those people found their advertising program and they milked it. Well, they were, built it. Ah, that was a good one. They, yeah, that was good, Miss Ruth. They milked it. Well, I remember Elmer's Lou was made by Borden that made Borden the milk, but I didn't realize that he was a yeah, master. That was uh, Elsie's husband. Yeah. They oh, were also good. one of the first people that learned how to uh, can this milk and how to preserve it. All right. And it was what people used for baby farmers if they didn't have a cow that was, they could milk or if the mother didn't have good milk. You could take a can of this and put a can and a half of water with it and a tablespoonful of Cairo syrup, and you could do it. Well, in 1943, somebody abandoned the baby in our doctor's office. On Christmas Day, he went to get his, his bag to come out and see my brother who had pneumonia, and he found this baby. My mother had a still baby in July, and he knew she was still grieving that baby. Well, he loaded that little baby up that bottled up in rags, and he brought it with him when he came to uh, check on my brother. Well, all the time Mama was expecting this other baby, I'd ask him why he was there, so I'm going to bring your baby sister. Well, my baby sister come, it was dead. I didn't want no dead baby sister. I was not quite four years old. And every time I'd see that old man, I'd kick his old both legs. And said, I didn't want a dead sister, get me a live sister. So when he found that little girl, baby, he knew how he was going to get me off his kneecap. And he comes driving up, and of course, nobody ever had a car to come to their house, so you had to run and go look out the windows to see who it was. And Mama's in there with my brother. And I went and to the other Mama, That was Mama Christmas night, right? Here. That was Christmas night. She was born Christmas Eve night, but okay. this was Christmas Day. Okay. She'd been there several hours before we found her house kept from freezing death is beyond me. God just didn't want her dead. And Mama said, I told her, I said, Mom, he's bringing my baby sister. She said, girl, if you don't quit telling them lies, I'm going to wear you out. I said, Mama, I'm honestly not lying this time. I had a good imagination. <laughs> and you won't accept that. And I kept telling her, Mama, he's got my baby, sister. Well, when he got close enough, she could hear the baby cry. 
for her and my sick brother all come running to the window to look. And I said, I told you. When we got in there, he told Mama, he said, Miss Effie, I found this baby in my office, my waiting room today. He always left it open and locked the inside door where the medicine was. Where if people come and had to wait, they wouldn't have to be in the weather. And there was a note pinned to that baby's rag that had around it. They had named her Ada. Well, Mama said I wouldn't name a milk cow mine Ada. I ain't about name a baby that. <laughs> so, uh, Mama had had a friend that had a little girl that her name was Pansy Lee. And she named my little sister Pansy Lee. And I kept telling Mama, Mama said, you know, I have to go outside to wash clothes. I can't always be in here. And I won't let you put wood on the fire and all this. I said, Mama, if you'll keep her, I swear I'll look after her. Well, my scrawny sister, by the time she was six months old, weighed 25 pounds. And I looked like wow. a big old fat. <laughs> I mean, she, her eyes was <laughs> all in shape, and she was a fat. She wasn't nothing but wrinkles. She weighed almost half as much as I did. And Mama would put me in one of them big old rocking chairs that, you know, had a lot of space between the bottom of the back before he got to the seat. And she put uh, quilts in that chair and put that baby in my lap. And you could, i go to rock and the chair would go to ride and I'd get up against the wall and I couldn't rock no more. Well, by the time I got there, behind had slid through the back of that chair. And then the, my sister both was pretty well like an advice. And every time I'd complain about it, Mama would say, no, if you'll get if you'll keep her, I'll look after her. <laughs> <laughs> she made me eat my words a bunch of times. But that's the only my mama was not supposed to have any more children. And we thought it was all over. Well, four years later my mama got pregnant. And the doctor told her she had thyroid condition. That affected her heart and her metabolism, and she lost 37 pounds in the first eight weeks of pregnancy. Wow. And he told my daddy that if she don't get an abortion, it's going to kill her. And they knew, he told us, you know, he knew a doctor that did this illegal then. It was going to cost $50, and daddy had to borrow a car to take her, and he came to get her, and she got almost that car. She put on brakes, and she said, I'm not going. Daddy stood there and cried and begged her to please do that. I can't raise these children by myself. And she said, God give me this baby. And if he didn't want me to have it, he wouldn't give it to me. If it dies, we die together. But I'm not killing it. She come back in the house and went on like nothing had ever happened. She had to go to University Hospital in Augusta and stay the rest of her pregnancy. She was on seven and a half months. Had the most perfect, beautiful little baby boy. And he was just a little doll, and that was my baby. But I was big enough then I could carry him around. <laughs> and he ever got in trouble. And Mama was going to wish him. I'd take him out running every time. <laughs> I'd, take Miss him, Ruth. I'd take him to school with him. That's amazing. Yeah. Miss, Miss Ruth, can you hear me? Yes. I look, listen, all those stories are just amazing, but we've come to the end of the show and we'll, I, I'm going to have to have you back on another time because I love, love your stories and hearing you tell about life and things that there's so much more we want to have. We'll have you on again before long, but I just want to tell you how much I love you and I love Mr. Al and y'all just mean the world to me. And, um, uh, I, I was just a special thing to ask you to come tonight and, uh, be our guest and, well, you know how much I love you and how much he yes, loves you, too. Yes, ma'am. And it's just an honor to have you on here. And I, I you, thank you so you're much. You're my favorite person. Thank you so much, Miss Ruth. All right. Good night. Join us on the podcast. Listen to us uh, anytime during the week. Listen to Georgia Radio for great music. And thank you, Mick Bros. Cattle Company, for making it possible. Right, thank you. Georgia Radio. Everywhere you go. If you send money to your loved ones internationally, do it with the Western Union app. Once you've downloaded it, you can send money around the world or back home in just a few taps. So family and friends can pick up cash fast. Download the Western Union app and send money today. Western Union. 
Fast, easy, reliable. Offered by Western Union Financial Services, Inc., NMLS 906983, or Western Union International Services, LLC, NMLS 906985. Terms apply. Never. The roar of our engines, the pump of our heartbeats, the pedal to our metal. The sparks that ignite us, the pistons that push us, the passions that drive us. From the feelings that move us to the places that pull us on the roads that unite us. With nearly 6,000 stores and over 17,000 auto care centers, Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. Here to keep you firing on all cylinders. Napa! 